Castrol GTX versus Castrol GTX Classic. What's the difference? What's in them? Stay tuned, you're gonna find out. Okay, so Castrol GTX has been around, it, it seems like forever. I remember the old viscosity breakdown ads like back in the 80s, that was Castrol GTX. Well, you can still go buy Castrol regular old GTX today, but you can also buy Castrol Classic GTX. What's the difference? We're gonna get into the details of it, but we're gonna go beyond our just regular oil analysis, looking at what's inside the bottle in this video series. This is episode one of two. So today's video, we're gonna go through like we normally do and show you what's in the bottles. Spoiler alert, there's already the hint right here in the front of it. There's gonna be more zinc in the Castrol Classic GTX versus the regular old API SP Castrol GTX. Episode two, we're actually gonna test both of these oils because ZDP is a highly <laughs> debated topic. There's a lot of people who believe you have to have more ZDP in the oil to have better wear protection. There's other people that kind of poo-poo that idea. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna partner up with our buddies, Total Seal, Rottler Manufacturing. We're gonna have some independent tests done down at Southwest Research, and we're gonna reveal the results of what's the wear difference between these two using actual engine parts in a test that actually simulates the real running conditions of an engine. So that's gonna be in episode two. So let's get right to it with the regular old Castrol GTX. That's the very first one. So when you look at Castrol GTX, like I mentioned, API SP is what it says right there on the label. You can see it for yourself. API SP. Well, when you see that, we can already look and say, okay, it's a 20W50. So guess what? Viscosity wise, it's right there. 18.4 centistokes. It puts it square in the middle of the 50 grade range. Oxidation value is 4.4. So we know this oil today's day is probably a group two base stock, which is gonna give you that. API SP package with less detergent and all that kind of stuff in there. It's gonna be a little bit lower on the oxidation value. And we also see that API SP, boom, right there. The calcium level is 984 with the magnesium of 434. Right in line with what we've seen on all the other API SP packages. Now here's the key thing, the phosphorus and zinc levels. 905 parts per million on the phosphorus, 786 on the ZDP. It's a 2050, you're actually allowed to put more ZDP in a 2050. Anything that's over a 10W30 can have more ZDP in it, up to 1200 parts per million ZDP in fact, and still be API approved. Now the ones that are 1030 and less are maxed out at 800 parts per million. And we've seen that in the other oils. Now this one is pretty much right there at that 10W30 API passenger car limit. And there's a little bit of margin of error when you're doing this kind of testing and blending and stuff. So I mean, I would basically say that even at 905 parts per million phosphorus, essentially the same additive package that Castrol is using in their passenger car grades, your 10W30s, and below essentially have more detergent than you have ZDP, unlike what we saw with the Mobile One 1550 and the Valvoline VR1 2050. They both had that same lower API SP detergent package, but they had more ZDP. This one doesn't have more ZDP. It's got a little bit of molybdenum a little bit of boron in there. Overall, you have basically the Molly's at 57 parts per million, the boron's at 134 parts per million, and I really think the boron really is from the dispersant package, not so much any type of uh, anti-wear uh, type package or friction modifier package. It's just basic, right? Let's just call it what it is. Castrol GTX 2050 is pretty basic passenger car package, it's just 
in a 20W50. That's what I see here. I don't see that higher level of ZDP. I don't see anything in this that makes it quote unquote racier like we saw with the Mobile One or uh, the Valvoline VR One. Here's the Castrol Classic GTX right there, API SJ, that older additive package. Hey, got the classic looking label on the front, API SJ rating on the back, and guess what? When you look at the additive package, <laughs> the, the label is telling you the truth. It is old school. Calcium, 3,721 parts per million, 11 parts per million magnesium. If we go to the viscosity, it's 18 centistokes, right in line with the other one, right in the middle of the 20W50 range. The oxidation value is six. Maybe they're using a little bit of old school group one base stock, don't know. Also bringing in 1,363 parts per million on the phosphorus, 1,538 parts per million on the zinc. So this one basically has twice the amount of zinc as this one does. I mean, not exactly, but you can see at 905 parts per million in the modern GTX, up to 1,363 parts per million phosphorus in the Castrol Classic GTX. That Castrol Classic GTX has much more ZDP in it. Even though it has a higher level of detergent, it has more ZDP and it also has more molybdenum. All that together makes for a pretty robust additive package. So this is gonna be a lot of fun to see how these two oils shake out when we do the wear test. Now, what's that wear test gonna be? What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use a ring on liner test. So we're going to take a real piston ring and a real cylinder liner, section them up, and we can rub them together. We can have the, simulate the same speed, the same load, the same temperatures, all the things that you would actually see in, in the engine, we can do that on that bench test. Now that's the key. There's a lot of different lube testing devices out there that people make claims and will grade and judge oils using those devices. The problem is, None of those devices actually use real engine parts. They don't use the same contact. They don't use the same metallurgy. Therefore, they really don't tell you what that oil is gonna do in the engine. Now, it will tell you what that oil will do on that device in that kind of lubrication scenario, but it doesn't really tell you what's happening in an engine. Because in an engine, there are all three stages of lubrication taking place all at pretty much the exact same time. You have hydrodynamic, which is full film. That's what your engine bearings live in. You also have a mixed film where it's partially an oil film, but partially the additives doing the job. And then you have boundary condition. That boundary condition is where the additives are doing all the work for you. A good analogy is a water skier. So if you think about a water skier in a boat, when the boat isn't moving, the water skier is down in the water. But then as the boat begins to accelerate, the skier begins to come up out of the water. It's not fully out of the water yet, it's just kind of in the middle there. But then as the boat reaches speed, the skier comes up on plane and the skier is now on top of the water. When the skier is on top of the water at that higher speed, that's full film lubrication. Yeah, that's where your bearings are working in that area. That transition is the mixed film. When the boat stopped, that's the boundary condition. What's called a stride back curve that we use in lubrication uh, to determine where you are in those three stages of lubrication has an equation, viscosity times speed divided by load. For example, a piston ring is one of the most interesting tribological devices within the engine because it experiences all three stages of lubrication every single cycle. It's going from high speed at mid stroke then as it nears top dead center on say a power stroke or compression stroke, what you're seeing is it's slowing down and that load's increasing. So you have decreasing speed, increasing load. 
So what happens is that piston ring goes from full film lubrication at mid-stroke through mixed into boundary at ring reversal, and then it goes it all over again. So the key to proper engine lubricant wear testing is having all three stages of lubrication, having the correct metallurgy, having the correct speeds, the loads, the temperatures, all the things that are actually happening in an engine, you have to replicate in the test. Which the reality is there's not a single bench test that can actually predict what happens in an engine because engines are just too complex. There's too many things happening. You have fuel dilution, you have blow by, you've got condensation building up. You have all these things happening in all the different areas of the engine. You have so many different metallurgies going on. A single bench test will never tell you the truth about what's actually happening in an engine. That's why when you get an API rated oil, it's actually had to pass several, not just one, several different engine tests. Not bench test, engine test. Because that's the only way to know what's actually going to happen in an engine. But even think about this. Let's say there's you know, five different engine tests involved with, say, an API rating. But those are just five engines. But there's way more than five different engines in the world, which is why for a brand of oil, some people may say, this oil worked great in my car. And other people say, well, that oil didn't work great in my car. Well, what's the difference? It could be the environment you're in. It could be the fuel you're using. It could be all kinds of different variables, but it also could be that certain engines like certain oils. That combination of the base oil and the additives make it where for that engine, it really liked that chemistry. That same chemistry maybe doesn't work as good in another engine, which is why having used oil analysis is so important to figure out what chemistry works best for you, for the fuel you use, the way you drive the car, the environment you, you live in, all of these factors play in. So it's impossible to just look at an oil spec sheet. It's impossible to use just a bench test to know what oil is gonna work best for you. The only way to know it is to do a little bit of trial and error, but use the science of used oil analysis to guide your decision-making process. Now, can you use some bench tests? Can you use spec sheets to narrow the field of all the possible choices? Of course you can, but you're never gonna know for certain what oil works best for you without doing used oil analysis. In fact, when we do the testing at Southwest Research, one of the ways we're gonna know which oil did better in that bench test is used oil analysis because that piston ring and that cylinder are operating in a bath of oil. So we're gonna run that test and then we're gonna look at the used oil and how much wear has occurred by analyzing the used oil. So make sure you stay tuned, hit subscribe, that way you don't miss that next video.